Kids, tonight's video is called Live, Laugh, Cry, Die. Live, Laugh, Cry, Die. It's something that, it's a paradigm that I live by. And I know a lot of people live by it to one extent or another, whether consciously or unconsciously. And I want to discuss this paradigm in more detail. Uh, today seems to be a perfect day to do that. For example, today I was feeling rather good. Um, I got my hair whipped, so I went to Walmart to see how that was going to work out. I ended up getting saluted by an old man in diapers. That was kind of cool. I almost got run over by a lady that claimed that she was a drunk driver driving um, one of those carts around Walmart like, like a crazy person and screaming at everybody, Drunk driver, watch out, watch out, watch out. I was like, I think that Walmart should not let people drive drunk in their carts up and down the aisles. I'm just saying, for insurance purposes. If I was the insurance company, I'd be wagging the finger at Walmart right now. Meanwhile, <clears throat> live, laugh, die, cry. Well, or cry, die. For example, today, um, I was on, I got a tweet from Belinda Carlisle from the Go-Go's, and she's like, one of, my, one of my homegirls from way, way back uh, from Southern California, from the Cuckoo's Nest and Odyssey and stuff like that. And one of her friends, or close friends at the time, was one of my friends. Not that I'm like real close with Belinda Carla, because I'm not. But um, I've been to a pool party that she was at and, and, and other things. I've been around Belinda Carla before, but not really. We're not tight, so I'm not going to sit there and lie and tell you, oh, yeah, she's my homegirl. She's, not, she's my homegirl to the, to the extent of we were in the same area at the same time back in the day, and we had mutual friends, and that was about it. Anyway, she was nice enough. I welcomed her to Central Florida because she's doing a gig tonight at the Parliament House uh, for Gay Days for Disney. And I thought, well, I will welcome, I follow her on Twitter, so I welcomed her to Central Florida, back to Central Florida, because I know she's been here before. And she's like, well, thank you very much. She was very, you know... But the fact that she responded was, was great. Uh, it shows that she cares about her fans and her people, and uh, she doesn't take people for granted. And she never, she never really did. She has always been quite sweet that way. So my, my gatekeeper said, well, I don't, who is she? So I, I played some of the music. It's like, I know who she is. Okay, now I know. Great, no problem. Remember, the gatekeeper is like a decade younger than I am. So... Then, he says, well, why don't you find out where she's playing and see how much it costs? So maybe there's still tickets left. So I went through this whole Google thing, and I finally got a hold of the Parliament House. And the princess that answered the phone called me Deary. Deary. Now, there's nothing more, <laughs> more matronly and that could make me feel any better than, oh, Deary. And that's exactly how I felt. Like someone was tapping my hand and trying to walk me through what was an easy, an easy process which I seem to have complicated in my brain that seems to be dissolving of old age. Because I asked the question about A, how much the tickets were and what the deal was, and then B, what about the parking situation? I only asked two questions, but I got the, the deary thing. I was, I was mortified. There's nothing... There's no way to separate me from my money after you've called me dear. <laughs> I just could not bear it after that. Um, no, I, I could not do that. I, as much as I love Belinda, sorry, sorry, doll, but you know, after the dearie thing, I don't think I could make there without my walker and my Geritol and maybe my little scooter. <sighs> so I decided to stay home and feel feeble and matronly. Now, that's a laugh for me. I'm laughing about that. As much as it irked me, I'm laughing about it. But when it gets down to brass tacks and serious things, we've all had friends in our lives who we've had to extricate, particularly on social media, because they're a buzzkill. They're a constant negative buzzkill. Now, I'll give you a good example of how this works. People like positive people or well-rounded people. People do not like anything that looks fake, like it's always too happy. 
And they don't like people that are constantly miserable and want to suck the life energy out of you because they're just so awful and life is terrible and they're suffering so. Nobody wants that. And nobody wants something, nobody wants somebody that sounds like, like everything is paradise all the time because it doesn't sound real. People want to feel real. Now, I'll give you a good example of this in my life. I have multiple disorders, physical, mental, emotional, um, dis diseases and conditions and etc., which I take a plethora of medications for. Some of them help, some of them not so much. But I take them and they cost money and, and every day I, was like, I have this routine and I had to take injections and all kinds of stuff to keep myself comfortable. Now, the truth be known, I wake up, I spend every day, I go to bed, I sleep all night, all in pain, constantly, all the time. Constantly. And I often talk about, I can't wait to die. I mean that. Because, although I know that there are people that have it worse and you should feel lucky, and I guess I should feel lucky, I still go to sleep every day in pain, sleep all night in pain, wake up in pain, spend all day in pain, and go back to sleep the next day in pain, and it gets old after a while. But if I sat and talked about that every day, that would get old even quicker than the pain. So I choose to laugh. I choose to take these bad situations and make them funny. I take, because you can't get to funny without pain. All kinds of pain, emotional pain, physical pain, whatever pain, that makes comedy. And comedy people will listen to. People will not listen to bitching and whining and moaning. It just is endless and goes nowhere and produces nothing. At least if you're making comedy, you can make somebody laugh. Now, I have dumped at least a half a dozen people out of my Facebook life for being constant downers. And trust me if I won't do it again at some point. But <clears throat> in my real life, for example, I don't talk about my pain. I don't talk about it at all. So the other day I had to bring it up for a reason. And the gatekeeper absolutely flipped out because he was not even, even in the mindset that I was actually waking up every day in pain and had been for several years. And then what even reinforced it more was when he went to go do an errand, he ran into an older gentleman who had multiple conditions and took multiple medications I was speaking to somebody else, so he was kind of eavesdropping on a conversation about how all these medications just make you feel like you're in pain all the time. Because these are poisons. Most of these things that we're taking are poisons. So yes, when you take a lot of medications, you just feel like crap. It just is. Now, I could sit and cry about it all day, but if I cry, I'm going to die, and I'm going to die alone and really miserable because no one's going to want to sit and listen to that. And if I start crying, I'm never going to stop. Because I can tell you, for example, that there are mo those are mornings where I, morning's kind of my, my downtime alone because no one's up. It's just me and the animals. And there are times I sit there and I you know drink my coffee. I go through my Twitter, my Facebook, and all this other kind of stuff. Go through my whole rigmarole pick out my song of the day, yada, 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 yada. And sometimes I want to listen to a couple different songs. And there are times I will just burst out in tears crying for, for particularly no reason. Or sometimes just because, you know, my feet hurt so bad I can't take it. Or just whatever. It, I just It's like an emotional release. And I'll just burst out crying. But could you imagine if I did that all the time? Could you imagine if you took me out to dinner and all I did was like burst out and, and crying? Now, that used to occur because of low testosterone, but I take testosterone shots now. So I have a feeling something is blocking, one of my new drugs is blocking part of the effect of my testosterone shot, which is making me more emotionally um, volatile. And obviously it's affecting my voice, because my voice lowered several octaves when I started taking testosterone. However, some little princess decided to call this old queen Deary today. And I know that I don't sound like the straightest dude, and I don't talk like the straightest dude because I'm the faggotiest faggot there ever was. But, please, dearie, honestly, 
dairy. I, I, I dairy. <laughs> so, back to the paradigm. Remember, when you're living your life, you be honest with folks. Make a well-rounded. Things are wonderful in this respect. Things aren't so wonderful in this respect. Make a positive and a negative. If you just make a, a positive, people are not going to trust that because you're, 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 there's part of the you're not getting the whole story. Everybody's life is not super humanly positive at all moments, at all times, on all levels, and all aspects. It just that's not the way life works. And if it is all super humanly wonderful all at once, it's not going to last. And one aspect of your life is going to go astray. It's just the way life is. So live and laugh. And even laugh about the things that aren't going so well. Because if you cry, you're going to die. And not just die in the physical sense, because sometimes nature can be cruel and will keep you going much longer than you want to. Hi, I'm here. I've been waiting to die for 20 years. But the point is, You'll die because people will walk away from you, and then you'll have no nurturing, you'll have nothing. You'll just sit there like this dried-up leaf, just waiting to be blown away by the wind. And that is the saddest place you can be in life. That is one thing out of all these things I've learned in the many years I've been on this earth, and I'm now in officially a deary, that I wanted to share with you today. Live, laugh. Don't cry because you'll die. People will walk away. Crying is just for a moment. Sometimes you need to express something. Sometimes you need to show people that you have feelings or that you're in pain or whatever. But it's just a moment. Do not get caught up in all that negativity. Because if you get caught up in the negativity in your own heart, it's just going to wilt you. So that's all I wanted to talk about today on my paradigm. And I will talk to you later.